In this presentation, we will understand special program number 9, Fibonacci sequence. So, without any further delay, let's get started. The topic of this presentation is special program, print the Fibonacci sequence. In this presentation, we will write the program to print the Fibonacci sequence of any size on the screen. But before writing the program for the same, first we need to understand the problem statement. So, let's look at the problem statement first. Write a program to print the Fibonacci sequence as shown. We are interested in printing this Fibonacci sequence on the screen. Now, you might be wondering how to print this Fibonacci sequence and what is a Fibonacci sequence? Let's first understand what is the meaning of a Fibonacci sequence. A Fibonacci sequence is a sequence in which each term can be obtained by adding the previous two terms. In general, we can say that the nth term of the Fibonacci sequence is equal to the n minus 1th term plus the n minus 2th term. Like in this case, if we observe that the third term can be obtained by adding these two terms, that is, by adding the second term and the first term. If this is the nth term, then this is the n minus 1th term and this is the n minus 2th term. 1 plus 0 is equal to 1, that is why we are seeing 1 here. Now, in order to obtain the fourth term, we need to add these two terms, that is the third term and the second term. 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, that is why we are seeing 2 here. In order to obtain the fifth term, we need to add these two terms. 2 plus 1 gives us 3, that is why we are seeing 3 here. In this way, we can obtain any term of the Fibonacci sequence. I hope this idea is completely clear. Now, you might also be wondering how to obtain the first two terms of the Fibonacci sequence. The first two terms are always fixed. These are 0 and 1. So, we can put them as it is. And the rest of the terms can be obtained by using the formula that is nth term equal to n minus 1th term plus n minus 2th term. Now, we are ready to write the program to print the Fibonacci sequence as shown here. We will not only print this sequence, we will write the program to print any size Fibonacci sequence. So, let's move ahead and write the program for the same. First, we will ask the user to enter the number of terms. So, let's ask this with the help of the input method. We need to provide the input method to the int method also because we know that from the input method, we will receive the string representation of the value entered by the user. We need to convert that to integer before providing it to some variable. So, let's type this statement, terms equal to int input, enter the number of terms. Here, we know that with the help of input function, we can ask the user to enter the number of terms. User will provide that value. We will provide that value to the int method. And finally, that integer value will be provided to the terms variable. Now, what is the next step after this? The next step is to declare two variables, n1 and n2, and assign them 0 and 1. This is what we need to do. n1 must be equal to 0 and n2 must be equal to 1. Why is that the case? These two terms are representing the first and the second value of the Fibonacci sequence. So, n1 is the first term and n2 is the second term. We know that these two terms are fixed, so we can declare these two variables in the beginning itself. Now, what is the next step after this? We need to check this if the user has entered a negative value or maybe zero then in that case, we need to ask the user to enter a positive integer. We'll print the message, please enter a positive integer. So, we need to check this condition. If terms is less than or equal to zero, then in that case, we will print, please enter a positive integer. It is important that the user must enter a positive integer in order to obtain the Fibonacci sequence. Now, after this, we also need to check this if terms is equal to 1, if the user has entered 1, in that case, we must print 0 on the screen because the user want just one term of the Fibonacci sequence. So, in that case, we must print 0. We must not perform any calculations in that case. So, here we need this elif statement, elif terms equal to 1. 
If it is the case that terms is equal to 1, then print the Fibonacci sequence, which is N1. We just want to print N1 on the screen. Now we know that if these two conditions are not satisfied, then in that case, terms will be equal to 2 or it will be greater than 2. So, in that case, we need to perform the calculations in order to obtain the correct Fibonacci sequence. So, we need this else statement and within this else statement, we will write the code to print the Fibonacci sequence as desired. Now, how to write the code to print the correct Fibonacci sequence? We already know the formula to obtain the nth term of the Fibonacci sequence. The nth term of the Fibonacci sequence is equal to the n minus 1th term plus the n minus 2th term. This is what we already know. We can use for loop to print all the values of the Fibonacci sequence. We can print 0, then 1, then 1, then 2, then 3 and so on. We need this for statement for term in range terms. Here to this range function, we are passing terms. And if terms is equal to 5, let's say, then this for loop will run 5 times. If terms is equal to 10, let's say, then this for loop will run 10 times. So I hope this idea is clear. We want to run this for loop the terms time. Now within this for loop, we need this print statement, print n1, comma, end equal to single quotes and within single quotes, the white space character. Now why do we need this print statement? In each iteration, we will print the value of n1. In the first iteration, we know that n1 is equal to 0. So, 0 will be printed on the screen. And then we will print 1. Then we will print 1. Then we will print 2. Then we will print 3. We will calculate the values and we will print them accordingly. This print statement allows us to print n1 on the screen. Now, after this print statement, we need to calculate n1 plus n2 so that we can obtain the next term in the sequence. So, we need to calculate this, that is n1 plus n2. And let's say that n is the variable pointing to the result of n1 plus n2. Now, we know that after printing 0 in the first iteration, we will get 0 plus 1 here, which is equal to 1. This is the third term of the sequence. So, n represents the third term, n1 represents the first term and n2 represents the second term. Now, we want that in the second iteration, n1 must be equal to n2. That is, n1 must be equal to the second term and n2 must be equal to n. That is, we want that n2 must be the third term. So, that when we move to the second iteration, we would be able to print the second term and we would be able to calculate the fourth term by adding the second term and the third term. I hope this idea is clear. So, we need these two statements, n1 equal to n2 and then n2 equal to n. We want that the second term must become the first term and we also want that the third term must become the second term. In the next iteration, we will add the third term and the second term, which will give us the fourth term. In this way, we can continue and calculate the values of the Fibonacci sequence. Now, let's execute this program line by line to fill in the gaps in our knowledge if there is any. So, now let's execute the first line of this code. Terms equal to int input, enter the number of terms. We know that after execution of this line, we'll get this output, enter the number of terms. Now, the user can enter the number of terms. Let's say the user has entered 5. In that case, the terms variable will point to this object with value 5. Now, after this, we need to execute this statement, n1 equal to 0 and n2 equal to 1. So, let's declare these two variables, n1 and n2, and let's make them point to these objects with values 0 and 1. After this, we need to execute this statement. Is terms less than or equal to 0? No, it is not the case. We can see this, that terms is equal to 5, which is a positive value. Therefore, this statement will not be executed. And this statement will also not be executed because this condition is also not satisfied. Hence, we will move to the else block. Now, in this case, we need to execute this else block. So, let's execute this statement for term in range terms. 
In our example, we know that terms is 5, so this will be replaced by 5. And we know this, that this for loop will run 5 times. This means that all the 5 numbers of the Fibonacci sequence will be printed on the screen. Now here, we know that the term variable will receive value 0. After this, we will execute this statement. We know that n1 is initially 0, therefore 0 will be printed on the screen along with the white space. Now after this, we need to execute this statement, n equal to n1 plus n2. We know that n1 is 0 and n2 is 1. Therefore, n is equal to 1. Hence, n is the variable pointing to this object with value 1. Now what is the next step? The first statement says n1 equal to n2, which means that n1 is now 1 and n2 is equal to n. This means that n2 is also 1. So we have n1 equal to 1 and n2 equal to 1. Now this is the second term of the Fibonacci sequence and this is the third term of the Fibonacci sequence. Now we can easily calculate the fourth term. So let's move to the second iteration. Now we know that this time term is equal to 1. Now let's execute this statement. This time 1 will be printed on the screen because n1 is equal to 1. This is the second term of the Fibonacci sequence. We know this already. After this, we need to execute this statement that is n equal to n1 plus n2. What is n1 plus n2? 1 plus 1 is 2. Therefore, n must point to this object with value 2. After this, we need to execute this statement. We know that after executing this statement, we will get 1 here. And after executing this statement, we will get 2 here because n is 2. Now, let's execute this statement once again. This time term is equal to 2. Now we need to execute this statement. We know that n1 is 1. Therefore, 1 will be printed on the screen. After this, we need to calculate this statement. n1 plus n2 is equal to 3. Therefore, we will get 3 here. After this, we need to execute this statement. We know that n2 is 2. Therefore, now n1 is equal to 2. Then we need to execute this statement. We will get 3 here because n is 3. Now, we need to execute this statement. This time, we know that term is equal to 3. Now, we need to execute this statement. We know the value of n1 is 2. Therefore, 2 will be printed on the screen. After this, we need to execute this statement. n1 plus n2 is equal to 5 because n1 is 2 and n2 is 3. So, we will get 5 here. Now, we need to execute this statement. We will get 3 here. And after executing this statement, we will get 5 here. So, n1 is 3 and n2 is 5 at this point. Now, let's execute this statement. After executing this statement, we know that term is equal to 4. Let's execute this statement. We know that n1 is 3, therefore 3 will be printed on the screen. Now, let's execute this statement. n is equal to n1 plus n2. We know that n1 is 3 and n2 is 5, so we will get 8 here. Now, let's execute this statement. We know that this time, n2 is 5. Therefore, now n1 becomes 5. After executing this statement, we will get 8 here in n2. So, we have n1 equal to 5 and n2 equal to 8. Now, this time we know that we are done with this for loop because we have completed a total of 5 iterations of this for loop and we are getting this result on the screen. 0, 1, 1, 2, 3 which is the correct sequence. That's what we want to obtain. Now, let's execute this code in Visual Studio Code. In Visual Studio Code, we will verify this result and we will also check for other inputs and see whether we are getting the correct sequence or not. So, let's open the Visual Studio Code now. I have opened the Python work folder and within this Python work folder, I have created this Fibonacci sequence.py file. And within this file, I have written the same code which we have seen in the presentation. Now, let's execute this code. For this, we need to open the new terminal. And now, let's type this command, python, then white space, then name of this file, followed by .py extension. So, let's type this now. Let's hit enter. Now, let's enter 5. Let's hit enter again. We are getting 0, 1, 1, 2, 3 on the screen, which is the correct output. Now, let's execute this command once again. And let's hit enter. This time, let's type 10. 
and let's hit enter again. We are getting this sequence 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34. You can verify this on your own that this is the correct sequence. Now let's execute this command once again and let's hit enter. This time let's enter 0. Let's hit enter. We are getting this message please enter a positive integer. Now let's execute this command once again. This time let's provide 1 here. Let's hit enter. We are getting this output Fibonacci sequence 0. So we have seen that we are getting the correct outputs and this means that our code is working correctly. Now let's get back to our presentation. So we have checked this program in Visual Studio Code and we know that this code is working correctly. This means that we are done with this topic that is special program print the Fibonacci sequence and this means that we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.